Hey friends, Victor Pisano with Charge Up. Thanks for joining us for another part of our series in building a champion's mindset. Today, I've got a great friend on, Damaris Linker. Uh, you know, the most rewarding part of my travels with Charge Up is to meet new people and hear their inspiring stories. So with Damaris, we actually met, I think it was November of 2019. Uh, Ole Miss was in College Station and I'm a graduate of A&M and it was the perfect thing. I was friends with Russ and I got to meet the whole group. And that was really fun. It was kind of a last minute thing. And everybody made me feel at home. I got my shirt. I got my hat. I put my shirt on. It looked like a tomato because it was <laughs> Ole Miss red. I was like, let's go. But that was such a fun thing. But what was great is I remember we went to work out and the girls were on the court and you and I got to spend a little bit of time together. Mm -hmm. And like, that's where I was like, I click, like I definitely click with her because of like, you just had a drive about you and you just something was inspiring. So Damaris is a graduate of Quincy university. So that's in Illinois. I had asked that question with a degree in accounting and finance. Uh, she not only graduated as an exceptional student, but she also had the opportunity to be a student athlete. And she did amazing things during her career, uh, accomplishing incredible things. You would think that would be the end of it. Nope. Following graduation, off to Ohio University to earn her master's degree. I mean, we're talking about a determined person, and it's part of her personality, I think. But in alignment with her undergrad and doing, I think, what everybody really does is, okay, so I've finished college. I get my master's. I'm going to go ahead and follow my degree. And she spent the next seven or so years uh, in finance. So you think this is the perfect story. I mean, successful collegiate student athlete, gets a great job in the finance industry, into the story. That's how most people would picture it. Nope, completely wrong. This is where... I believe Demars is different. I think she's just a different person. And she did what I wish more people would do. And what that is, is she completely stepped outside of her comfort zone, knowing she had a great career. Everything was fine how it was. But I think that there was a, a passion that was inside you saying, I love my career, but I need something more fulfilling. I need, I need to follow what my purpose is. And you made an incredibly radical change, incredibly radical change in your life. I mean, tell me about how that happens. How do you at one point say it's time and move forward? That's a great question. Um, so I, um, I actually only um, worked for the public accounting firm for about six months before I really realized that it just wasn't for me. Um, I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was making an impact on a daily basis. I, I really didn't know, you know, my purpose, I guess, in going to work and why I was doing that. And then I would just come home and, you know, work out and, and that was my life. And I, I just, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't, I didn't like that. So thankfully, and gr I'm grateful for this. I, I had the opportunity. I was asked to come back to the volleyball world. Um, someone I knew had a job opening for me to be a graduate assistant. And that kind of, I think, sparked it and really is what got me to do it um, because I had the opportunity. And so the rest is history. <laughs> I mean, at any point where you're like, this is crazy, this is crazy, this is crazy. Yes and no, maybe. I don't, I don't really, maybe now looking back on it, the crazy part was the financial part. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> I, went, I went from an awesome, I mean, <laughs> pretty much, you know, <clears throat> I don't want to say unheard of, but a great job right out of college to going back to being a graduate assistant where I was, had a very small stipend on a monthly basis. Um, and so that was, you know, that was the radical part of the radical change too. But I, I just felt like there was, there was more. And, um, I really felt like I should be doing, doing something else. <laughs> and I think that's the fun part is when somebody realizes it and they gain the courage and the confidence, they just kind of say, what do I have to lose? You have choices. And Absolutely. you control those choices. Sometimes they're difficult, yeah. but if you really are passionate about it, like just run, go for it. 
So let's talk about another journey you're on. Because before we get into like some of the meat of the questions, sure. I'm kind of noticing a, a little trend occurring over the past few weeks with you. You have uh, an absolutely amazing sister with Hope. Hope has done some consultation for Charge Up. She is a social media guru. Damaris recommended her, and her and I talked about four months ago, five months ago. She's done two projects for us, working on a third, and she just is like the queen of creativity, social media, you name it. All of a sudden, I'm looking, and on Damaris's social media, she's starting to do a little influencer stuff. She's talking about uh, you know, what she does, how she does it, uh, her workout, her fitness, uh, nutrition, kind of a little bit of everything. And I was like, okay, that is so outside of her comfort zone. Because when I compare you and Hope, I think there's the yin and the yang. And that's why you two are so close. Is She can talk for hours and you just probably are like, oh, what a great story. And now you're up there like, okay, it's my turn. And I've loved how you've jumped out into the social media game. Tell me about this. What happened? What's going on? Is this your summer hobby? <laughs> you can say that. Sure. Um, yes, kind of, uh, you know, a lot of different things. Um, <clears throat> so number one is definitely her inspiration. Um, she, it's, it's just so cool. I mean, she's the younger sister. Um, and, you know, I've always tried to be a leader for her and be the big sister and kind of, you know, lead the lead the right direction. But now she's, I mean, I tell her all the time, she's inspiring me. She's, you know, has her own business. She is very brave and courageous on social media. She's sharing tons of information for people. And I just think that's so cool. And I think one of the big reasons why I use social media is to learn new information, to see what people are doing. Um, and so I thought, you know, a, you know, another, another kind of light bulb moment, but I have more to offer and I can mm -hmm. offer that via social media because, you know, we're not able to connect with people every day and we all have our different lives. I live, uh, you know, my closest friends live in three other States than I do. And I have, you know, you probably do too, have friends across the United States. And so I just kind of wanted to influence more people, maybe make an impact, um, maybe think, have people think about things in a different way. I've met great people like you who asked great questions to me recently. And so I just think it would be cool to share that stuff and, um, you know, kind of give back because I take a lot from social media, I guess. So give, give back on my social media. But you were just right out there. This is so uncomfortable, but I'm going to do it. And you were almost like looking at the clock, like you had said, I'm going to set so much time for this. And then that's it. <laughs> but now they're better. And it's only been a couple of weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And you're more comfortable. Oh, yeah, I think for sure. And something, and I don't know if I put this together or it was just kind of like subconscious, but I recently spoke at the American Volleyball Coaches Association. This summer. Convention. This summer. When was that? November, December? December. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I just, I actually really enjoyed it. I thought I was going to be super nervous and I wasn't. And I think it was because I was very confident in what I was talking about. Kind of like you mentioned, like I talked about what I do on a daily basis. And that's very easy for me now because I have quite a, you know, a decent amount of experience in it and I've learned a ton. So maybe that kind of sparked this and just... Yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to get out there, I guess. <laughs> and there's people who want to learn, and their way of learning is connection. And you do. You have such a uh, niche background and future, but w in what you do, and we'll get to this later in the interview, I think people assume they know what a director of operations is. I think they assume they know what an athlete's lifestyle is like, but until they hear it repetitively, from somebody who's been there, done that, you have the ability to influence. And to me, leadership is one simple word. It's influence, the ability to change somebody in a positive fashion. And just knowing you, you're the lead by example. You're the lead by um, empathy, uh, affirmation. You're there for others. So I think you're going to have more fun doing this than you really think. But what concerns me is I would like to see what hope charges you and what hope is charging me. Cause if it's a friends and family discount, I got to get in on that. 
So let's go into uh, your career. Let's go back from when you jump in as a grad assistant. Once you got settled in, had you already begun to think about what the journey would look like? Did you already have that start going through your mind? Did you know it was going to be a planned out thing? No, I didn't. Honestly, um, I would say, so it's a little interesting. So I started as actually a graduate assistant coach. Um, and then I moved on and became a graduate assistant director of operations and um, really fell in love with that role. And Honestly, so I played division two, so I had no idea that role was even a possibility. I, I didn't know. <laughs> um, and that's also what I think is kind of cool about my story. And like, what I like to share is that there is just so much out there for, for graduates to look at and so many career paths you can take. Um, and so, so no, I would say I didn't know, but I, I do know once I, became a director of operations, I just fell in love with that role and um, kind of what that meant, what you did for the program and all of that. So I definitely, definitely wouldn't say it's planned out. <laughs> but it's ended up pretty good. Yes, absolutely. It's all ended up good. So into those six years working at some major university programs, tell me about the journey, but like specifically what's been most rewarding what are some of the lessons you might have learned along the way? And then the honesty part, what's something maybe in hindsight you would have done different? So the first thing, so one of the first pieces of advice I received when I became a director of operations was over communication. And I always have known communication is important and it's always been important to me because I've been in a lot of leadership roles. So I felt like that's, always been important, but that is one of the biggest things um, I've learned. And I think that's also can translate into one of the things that's been most rewarding, the relationships part. So really getting to know athletes and, you know, seeing them as more than just an athlete. I think that's rewarding. I think another big part that's rewarding for me is being able to provide an opportunity for young women to you know, blossom basically. So they're getting to play college volleyball. They're getting an awesome degree. They're meeting their best friends who they'll probably have for the rest of their lives. Um, and so that's really rewarding for me. I had such a great experience as a student athlete and have loved the friends I've made from that. And I just love giving that to others and, and seeing that happen. So that's really awesome. And then another thing is just the ability to give them experiences. So being able to travel to new places that maybe they wouldn't be able to travel to without volleyball or without college. Um, that, and then also, you know, I've been very fortunate to where I've worked and we have really nice gear <laughs> and we have really nice sponsors. And so just being able to provide them with a lot of awesome equipment and really all the resources they need to be successful. But one of my favorite things that you said was connection. Like I'm a firm, firm believer. This generation and even your age is about trust. And what I hear so much is there are people who have to understand that when you're coaching somebody, this generation wants you to know more about them and focus more on just their athletic abilities. Like they want you to know the whole person. They're going to, they'll allow you to get closer, but you've got to earn that trust. And it's going to come through you being authentic, you communicating consistently. And what you said, care about me more than just for my athletic abilities. I don't want to just be judged because then you know what that leads to actually, Damaris, is this problem we have of them thinking their performance is their value, which is a bad, bad thing. With the coaches that you've worked with uh, from Ohio, I know just limited right now with tech, but is that something that you actively discuss with coaches about ways to improve communication? with the team? Yes, absolutely. Especially in my role. Um, I feel like I, you know, of course the coaches are communicating with what needs to be done on the court, 
but there's so much I have to communicate as well that goes on behind the scenes, but the team needs to know, the staff needs to know. Um, so I, I'm always, I am trying to like look at new ways to communicate better, um, to be more specific. So we get out what we, we want the first time, um, to be more assertive. And so, yes, I definitely am communicating or asking about that and trying to talk about that pretty much on a daily basis. Only because I've been involved in sports management, do I truly understand what your role is as a director of operations. I'd love for you to explain just how glamorous the job is, the role, your responsibilities. Explain to people exactly how much you're responsible for, because I do not believe anybody truly gets it. <laughs> oh, yes. You know, I usually start by telling people, well, I tell people what I do and I, I do everything but coach and recruit. And that's where people don't really understand then what I do because there's, they're like, what else, what, is, what else is there? Exactly. And there's so <laughs> much. So um, I'm in charge of all travel. So I am the one responsible to make sure that our charter bus shows up on time. It gets to the place that we're supposed to go, you know, correctly, and we're taking the right route. Um, <laughs> I'm responsible for any flights, all of our meals, making sure they're on time, whether it's a pregame meal or making sure the food's there uh, before the match ends so we can just get right going after the match. Um, I'm responsible, kind of like I mentioned, for equipment. So I make sure the players have all the stuff they need on a daily basis, whether that's for practice. So if a shoestring breaks in practice, I'm the one that goes and finds a new shoe for them to put on. Um, you know, we always carry an extra bag of equipment on the road. So in case somebody forgets something or something happens, we've always got that taken care of. I work on all of our summer camps. So the camp website that you see, I am one of the main people who help with that and kind of get that up and running, all the registrations, anything that has to do with camp, really. Uh, the schedule, you know, making – if our players, if we need help working camp, getting our players all set up to work, um, ordering the T-shirts, any all of that stuff. And so much more. I had to kind of look yeah. at my notes a little bit. Uh, you, and that, you haven't even gotten into the budgeting aspect yet. The university tells you what your budget is, but yes. I know on the other side, the coaches are like, we need all these things mm -hmm. and you've got to balance that. Thank God you got a finance degree. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yes, I really help the head coach manage the budget, um, do the projections every year. And, you know, if we need to save a little money in some areas, we work on that and kind of just manage it throughout the year. So it's really helpful to have the background I have. Um, I think it would be a lot more difficult for me in that area if I didn't have that. And so um, it's really nice to have that because it's really important to stay under budget. <laughs> so. I tell people for a director of operations, they are like the cruise director, the caterer, the counselor. <laughs> They're in charge of balancing the checkbook. Their hours are just 24. And the days of the week that they work, it's just seven. Not only are they focused on the schedule of their own facility and their home court, oh, but by the way, they've got to schedule every away game and when they can be on the court, when they have to be off the court, the locker room or the amenities there for the, what they need. Do the trainers have adequate space? Uh, what about the people who are going to be calling the game? Do they have the adequate equipment? Do they have the space? Like, if you're not organized, this job isn't for you. Would you agree? Absolutely. You were mentioning half the stuff that I even forget I do. <laughs> I really thought about people who, if they love sports and if they're an athlete and that's where their passion is, this is a great career. Would you agree? Absolutely. I absolutely love my job. I, I don't know if I can say that anymore. Um, it's definitely hard work, um, but that's, I think, one of my strengths. <laughs> I think that's why I like to do it. I'm always busy. Like you mentioned, I every day is a new day, which is really kind of cool. And, you know, I might have a list of 20 things to do today, but somebody might stop in the office and need something. And, and that's what I love, too. You know, I love, you know, helping out when, when needed. And maybe it's not on my schedule to do, but that doesn't bother me at all. I really love that. So let's get to the leadership aspect because part of this series deals with building a champion's mindset. 
to me, part of being a champion is understanding that there's a leader within all of us and you have an obligation to elicit the greatness out of others in listening to you and throughout this conversation, you've talked about ways that you've done that. You've talked about your um, joy of talking with others, um, inciting some sort of joy or passion in what they do by modeling what you're doing. So based off that, when I look at high school and college for you, it's evident you were a leader on the court. Uh, You were team captain for three years uh, while playing college ball. Tell me, First, how did you earn that role on that team? But then more importantly, how did you hold it for three seasons? Because that's not normal. You know, I think it's, again, a great question. I think one of the biggest things I did was I came in with a lot of confidence. Um, I was young, obviously. (laughs) I came in as a freshman. Um, But I came in with a lot of confidence, and I came in with a lot of determination to change the program that I came into. Um, I definitely wanted to leave a mark on that program when I left. And so I kind of came in guns blazing. Um, And like we kind of talked about, I feel like I am definitely a leader by example. And then when I get on the volleyball court, I am definitely a vocal leader too um, on the court, but obviously I am not in that position anymore. So I just led by, by example from the start, and I think that really helped. I think I really pushed a lot of people, um, pushed some people who were older than me, and kind of made them step up. So I think that was part of what I gained, how I gained respect. So what advice would you give to these young adults who are still trying to discover their role on a team, knowing that they have more to offer? I would say, um, you know, really try to – get out of your comfort zone. Um, It's just, it takes, it takes that one step to get started and then it will just become easier from there. I think it's, um, you know, having one-on-one conversations with your teammates and getting to know them better, showing them that you care off the court and that will then translate to you being able to lead on the court. Again, with getting to know teammates, communication is huge. Um, I think, doing things that other people might not want to do, being a servant leader. Maybe you're the one cleaning up the gym at the end of the night. You're making sure that all the equipment's put away. Um, You know, you're the one who asks the coach if anything else needs to be done. I think there's, um, you know, little things. You don't have to show up really big at first, but you do need to start doing something, you know, little each day to kind of figure out how you are as a leader. Were these habits you carried from high school into college? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay, so you had that confidence the minute you stepped on the court. For sure, yes. It was definitely, volleyball court was definitely my comfort comfort zone, um, for sure, yes. And even though it was there, it wasn't as relevant, you probably didn't face much drama with social media because it wasn't as relevant, was it really? No, not at all. Um, I mean, Instagram didn't become a thing until I was in college, almost done with college. Um, I think Snapchat was in college at some point too. You know, we, we I had Facebook, um, I think at the end of high school maybe, but no, social media was not really a part of um, my journey. So I know today it's a lot different for student athletes um, and what social media can do do for them or maybe against them. So do you sometimes see it as a distraction towards success? I think so. I think people can easily get caught up in what's being said on social media or maybe what somebody else is doing. And I think it it can hurt when people start comparing themselves Mm -hmm. and really getting down on that instead of maybe being inspired by other people on social media or, you know, finding what they're good at and doing that. Um, I think it can be help. I mean, I love social media. That's kind of why I've started to dive more into it. But I also think it can cause a lot of comparison too. Let's move to the leadership aspect of what's affecting you from Ohio to where you are at, uh, Texas Tech, what are some leadership traits that you've noticed and realized are critical when you're around the head coaches and the assistant coaches are are critical for success, but not just necessarily in wins and losses, 
but in respect, in creating a legacy and a pride in the program. What are some things that you've noticed in your journey? Yes, I think, you know, number one is definitely a hard worker. I feel like it's really hard to be a leader if you don't work hard. (laughs) And if you don't show that you're working hard, I think that's really, really difficult. I think um, another big thing is very high character and integrity. So I think being someone who does the right thing all the time and really um, tries to lead in that way, lead by example in what they do. I think it's really important on a team, especially to lead in all areas of your life. I think it's important to lead in academics, making sure you're staying on top of things with that. Um, I think it's really important to lead in the locker room. So what, what's being said in the locker room, how the locker room's being taken care of. I mean, that sounds silly, but making sure the locker room's picked up and, you know, nice. <laughs> and I think just, you know, always, I think communication is another huge piece of it. I think um, to be a great leader, you have to be able to communicate with t- lots of different types of people. That's a big thing I've learned. Um, you know, you have to be the one communicating with your teammates, with your coaches, and that's that's a totally different type of communication typically. So I think there's kind of those those couple of things really stand out. It's a lot of the small intangibles, isn't it? Yes. I think we all know the big things that we need to do, but it's even coaches say it all the time, focus on the little things, focus on the little things. That message goes far beyond just in your skills and what you're doing on the court. That's pretty much life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And kind of like we talked about focusing on the on the things you can control too, you know, that's right. That's right. Those those little things, you know, those daily things that you're doing, making sure you're doing things right every day and not slipping up. So that's really important. As a player, were you able to let go of a loss easy? In other words, did you think about it during the evening and wake up and say it's a new day or were you a player who just hated losing and it it was your motivation to work harder? I would say I, I I let it go pretty well usually because really, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. (laughs) I tie that into the things that you can control and the things you can't control. Right. And you know, the only, it's just, it's going to hurt you more to hang on to it and replay everything. Don't get me wrong. Yes. You should maybe watch film and, obviously think about what you can do better for for the next game and and maybe what things weren't quite right or you know you didn't follow the game plan in this area but I don't think I held on to losses very long um, because there's always there's always the next next match you have to prepare for and that's really what I I focused on one of the things I said when I was a player um, so in volleyball we score points so one of the things I said was just one point at a time that's all you can it's all you can think about that's all you can worry about even when you're down by 10 points all you can worry about is one point at a time it's that finite mindset in yes. other words the most important time is now be where your feet are and what happens happens but don't worry about the outcome like just be right here right now and work hard yes uh, that definitely contributes to your thought process on controlling the controllables obviously i said at the beginning that I admire your courage, especially your positivity and work ethic, another word that I think is critical when we talk about leadership. So I'm curious, what does the next 10 years look like for you? You know, That's a it, tough question. It, it is, because I, I look at the things you have, but I also know you are extremely goal-oriented. I know you have aspirations. Do you have a roadmap? Have you thought about that? So this is not a career goal, but I definitely want to have a family. Um, family's really important to me. So that's what I look forward to in the next 10 years for sure. I also look forward to just being in a position where I can let people flourish, kind of like what I talked about earlier with student athletes. Um, I can give them an opportunity to be successful. I can give people you know, a place or a space where they can, they can learn and they can grow and they can find what they really want to do. I was given a really awesome opportunity um, with my last job and my, my former boss to really kind of spread my wings and, and take ownership in, in what I was doing. And I want to be able to keep giving that to people because that was really cool. And I think that's really important. 
I think you get so much more out of people when you really allow them to open up and expand their, their reach and figure out what they're good at. I think you, you just get so much more out of people. So I just hope to have that type of, that type of impact, be able to do that on a, on a daily basis, whatever, in whatever capacity that is at that time. Um, and then I also, you know, this isn't like specific by any means, but I really want to dive into volunteering more and also um, being able to give financially to different organizations, be able to support different people, small businesses. Um, I'm, I'm passionate about that too. I'm from a, a very small town. And so I know and respect small businesses. And so that would just be important to me too in the future, just being able to give and give back and share my story, which I've tried to start doing now. Absolutely. And, you know, gratitude is the most rewarding uh, thing in the world. I think success and gratitude are absolutely aligned. Some people have financial success. So I'm not going to necessarily say gratitude is aligned with financial success because that does not define a leader, nor does it define success. Those who are morally grounded in their success, I guarantee you gratitude is a priority. So to hear you say those things, that that's something that you're striving for, that's so encouraging. Because you, you know, I'm huge on gratitude, huge on gratitude. So when I hear that, it's like, great. I mean, we got to keep that ball rolling. We got to keep going. And the other thing that I really found uh, inspiring was like when I started Charge Up, I was 50-50. I did 50% uh, talking to businesses and 50% talking with universities. It was crazy because after the first year and I had to kind of evaluate and retrospectively look and see where I was. I had to find what my niche was going to be and I was struggling with it. And I had somebody tell me, where do you have the most fun speaking? Like it's the most obvious question in the world, but I never asked myself that question. I was asking, are people listening? Is my message coming across? And the answer was so easy. I was like, Oh, student athletes. Why? Like, Cause they're sponges. Like they're willing to change. They're willing to be open-minded they give you full attention if you're giving them something pertinent. Whereas sometimes with the businesses and I have no, like if you're watching this, I'll still come speak to you. Don't get me wrong. But the thing was some of the people that I worked with, they really just wanted um, a nice mission statement or what our core values. And it was really just paper. I felt like it was a procedure manual. And when I'd walk away, and if I come back three months later, nothing really changed, but there was a huge poster on the wall of what their core values were and what the team was working on. Okay, now flip it. I go speak to a university. I go back in a couple of months, and everything we've talked about it is actually a part of their routine, and they're eager to learn to go to the next level. What else can we do? And it's like that's fulfillment. When you're able to impact somebody and make a positive change and just be – someone who believes in them, supports them 100% and proves to them that you appreciate them without regard for, I don't care what position you play. Like you think I'm worried about your performance. I don't even care what you do. I don't, if you're the manager or if you are the star, I don't care. If I am doing something that contributes to your success or confidence, then that's all I can ask for. And you sound like you're the same way. Yes. I, I mean, um, I've felt a lot of fulfillment in just seeing, seeing them succeed, you know, or seeing something maybe I said, or maybe, you know, I influenced them. Hey, why don't you go talk to the coaching staff about that? That could, that could really help you here. And just seeing those things actually happen. That's, that's really fulfilling and, and making, you know, also, also being in the position where I was a student athlete and I chose a different path than what my degree was. And don't get me wrong. Like I love my degree and I use it um, for sure. But I just, I just really think it's important too. you don't have to stick to one thing or stick to what your degree was in and, and be unhappy. I just think there's a lot of, a lot of ways to go. So. And what's good for you is you aren't too far removed from your playing days. So you've already earned trust because they can relate to you because you can literally have empathy for the situation they're in 
regardless of the situation, because at some point in your career, you were in that same situation. Whereas a head coach, it's a little bit more intimidating, maybe to bring it up or to talk about it. Right. And that's why I said part of your job as director of operations is sometimes you're the counselor. Like they're going to come to you with the worst problems in the world. And can we talk? And like, it's just going to be a breakdown. Mm-hmm. But they walk away from you and they feel totally confident. That's the reality of your role, isn't it? Absolutely. And I laugh because I feel like I'm a counselor for a lot more than just the student athletes too, which again, I love. <laughs> um I touch by communication, you know, working with so many different people on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. Um, I get to hear a lot and I hopefully get to help a lot. (laughs) So um, that's also fun too. And just really getting to know people more, like get to know the coaches for more than just being a coach, get to know, you know, somebody else that I work with for more than just what they do. So it's, it's really fun. It's cool. So let me close with this. What advice can you give somebody who may be struggling because although they enjoy their career, they know that they want to pursue something else that they're much more passionate about. And we know that the barrier that separates them is the fear of the unknown. I mean, fear is something that everybody has as an excuse. You don't want to go outside that comfort zone. Based off of your experience and the success that you have had in that decision that took a tremendous amount uh, of courage and confidence. What advice can you give them in how to evaluate the decision and then just step off the cliff and build the wings on the way down? Yes. So first I would say just life is way too short. Um, I'm sure, and I think this is, might be something we've talked about too, but life is just too short to not at least try. I think, you know, I think the biggest thing is trying. If there's something that you really want to do, try it. Um, And you, if you have a strong why as to why you want to try it or why you want to do something, you'll figure out how to do it after, after you make the decision or after you start. So I just think knowing, knowing your purpose, knowing why you want to do something is really important. And then I think um, another thing is just surround yourself with good people, surround yourself with people who support you. And some, for some people that might be harder than others in, in certain situations, I'm very grateful. I've had a great support system and, you know, people have, who have stuck by me while I've made <laughs> some changes or decisions to move across the country or do different things. Um, but I think, that's a huge piece too, is surrounding yourself with really good people. And I think it's also, you know, important to, if you're really, if you're fearful of what other people think, I think, um, you know, they don't, they're not going to help you pay your bills or their opinions aren't going to help you pay your bills or they're not the ones who have it on their heart to maybe do something different. So I think you need to, you need to just follow what you want to do and, and try to try to find those good people. <laughs> So where do you want me to send people who want to learn more about you, especially as you begin this social media journey? You tell me so they can know. Yes, sure. So my Instagram is just my name, Damaris.Linker. And I'm doing a lot of stuff on Instagram first. Um, I also have a Facebook, so I'll probably get on that pretty soon and kind of try to amp that up as well. Um, so those two, those two spots are, are where I'm at. Okay. We got to get, we need a bunch of followers. We got to get her going (laughs) here with that confidence of a sold out room every time she offers us some advice. Cause I'm going to listen. I absolutely am going to listen. I'll be your first fan. I'm ready for the badge. They, Oh, they don't do badges on Instagram. (laughs) I got to get a badge that I'm a top fan. Yes. Damaris, I sincerely appreciate you taking the time. It's funny. I feel like uh, I'm blessed that our paths crossed in November I told you that day at the arena that we were like-minded. I said you were an old soul. I said that your confidence, it it just, it was exuding off of you and you really weren't doing anything, but I kept noticing everybody asking you and you had the answer. And I was like, wow, like she is in total control of everything that's going on. But I think you being on and you being a guest here in relation to building the champion's mindset, what this does is it tells people that what you're passionate about, like go all in, 
Go all in and enjoy it. And even after your career is done, you can still have that same champion's mindset in what you do moving forward. So I really appreciate you offering your insight and giving some people some great, great feedback. Hopefully we're going to talk again soon. On, when you have your show, will you invite me on your show once things get going? Absolutely. I mean, you're the first call I'm going to make, so for I love sure. It. I'm honored. <laughs> call my people. <laughs> That's right. That's Operators right. are standing by. His name is Victor. <laughs> Thanks again. I hope you have a great day, a great weekend. Enjoy yourself and tell Hope I better not be paying more than you are. And you can tell her hello, too. I'll have a little chat with her, but Victor, I just want to thank you so much. I'm really grateful to do this. I think this is so awesome. Um, you know, I definitely think like you and my sister and some other people have been inspiring me to ask good questions to people, you know, ask better questions um, than surface level questions. Think about, think about life in such a bigger, bigger picture. So it's been really cool to connect with you. And I'm really, really glad we got to do that. Well, I say let's do it again. Thank you. Great. Take care. I appreciate it. Friends, have a great weekend. And don't forget, charge up. Charge up. <laughs>